It's time for Success in Real Estate with Frankie Griffin, owner and broker in charge of the Palmetto Success Team, certified residential specialist, accredited buyer representative, military relocation professional, real estate appraiser, and author of Success in Real Estate. If you are interested in buying or selling a home, investing in real estate, or having your home appraised, you will enjoy Success in Real Estate. Now, here's Frankie Griffin. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Success in Real Estate. I'm Frankie Griffin, broker in charge and appraiser. Got a great show lined up for you, especially if you have had any hurricane damage, wind damage, rain damage, whatever kind of other damage comes with a hurricane. We've got the answer for it. We've got the man, Craig Giles, is in studio. Craig Giles owns Giles Independent Insurance Agency. Good morning, everybody. You doing well today? I'm great, my friend. How are you? Oh, this is such a fine day today. <laughs> I've been looking forward to doing this show all week long because um, I've been getting a lot of people calling me mm -hmm. about stuff and and all i can do is say here's craig's number and <laughs> let me know what you find out yeah and and we appreciate that so we want to um we want to sort of let's put it out and let the listeners hear but hey if you've got any questions or, or even comments um give us a call the number here in studio is 799-8255 because, Craig, you know, most of the calls I'm getting from, um, and quite frankly, from agents that either have a house listed that suffered some damage or mm -hmm. something and they're not sure, you know, is it a lot of, you know, we didn't get hit real bad here in Columbia, <laughs> right, obviously, we, yeah. thank goodness. But um, a lot of people got little, got nicked up, house, car, whatever, got mm -hmm. nicked up. And is it worth calling my insurance company to for a little repair? Uh, well, no. If you know it's just a small repair, um, you know what we encourage everyone to do is, you know, if you if you are with a company that that um, that has an agent, um, which most companies do, not all carriers do. Some some of the carriers like Geico and Progressive, or not, excuse me, Geico and USAA, you deal straight with the company. Yep. But if you've got an agent, call your agent first before you file a claim. Um, you, you know that they can help guide you through that process, help you uh, evaluate. It, whether it's worth filing a claim, mm -hmm. you know, you can have situations where you file a claim, you just collect a little bit of money, and then see an increase in your premium, and you might end up spending more in, in premium the next three years than yeah. if you just paid for that claim. And, and that's the, that's what you're scared of, right? You know, you, on one hand, you think, you know what, I paid for this insurance, mm -hmm. surely I can get something covered, but but then if I do, then they're going to increase my premium. <laughs> Right, and and here's here's the way I explain this. And actually, you know, when I'm when I'm talking with your with your students, um, I, I use this example. My job really is not that I'm an insurance agent. I'm a bookie. <laughs> you're, you're making a, you're making a bet with the insurance company for yeah. a specific time period that something you're betting something's going to happen. They're betting something won't happen, and they determine the odds and say, okay, we'll do it for this much money. And at the end of that time period, one of you wins the money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, but you know, a lot of people tend to look at it as a savings account and think, "Oh, well, I paid all this into it, and I should be able to collect." But that's that's not really how it works. So, if I just call you, I said, "Craig, look, you know, I've got <clears throat> a leak in the roof. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't know how much or how little damage it, but I know my roof's leaking. I got stains <laughs> in my ceiling." Can I talk to you as a, without my without that company finding out about it? That's what we that's what we encourage is to, encourage people to do is talk to us, their agents. Um, you know, if you need a contractor, you have, if you have a contractor that uh, you trust, have them come out and take a look and determine you know what caused that damage. Uh, if you don't have one, then we certainly have folks that we deal with that we trust, and uh, because we want to know what the damage is, where it came from. How much is it going to cost to repair it? That way you can make an educated decision as to whether or not it's worth filing for. And you got, and obviously take into account whatever your deductible exactly. is. And exactly. If you, if you have a $1,000 deductible and you have $1,300 worth of damage, do yeah. you really want to collect $300 and, and risk your premium going up? Yeah, and it go up by 20%. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> well, let's go straight to our phone lines. I guess we got a question from Stephen. How are you doing this morning, Stephen? You, you with us, Stephen? 
Yes, I oh, would, oh, yeah. All right, how you doing today? Oh, I'm having the time of my life. How about you? Oh, this is a <laughs> fine day today. It sure is. What's going on? Oh, I just have a general question. Maybe you could answer for me. I have a renter at a home, and he would like to buy my home. Uh, he doesn't have m money for a down payment. Is there any way I could pay the down payment for him? Well, um, yeah, it w it's going to depend on the type of loan, and there are a lot of variables to that. Uh, most of the time, the, if, if the lender requires a down payment, then there's a good chance um, they're not going to let you pay it for them. Um, but they may. I, but what you could, but you, what, what you could do as an option is um, finance it. Say, for example, they had they were had to put down five thousand dollars. Then mm -hmm. you could take back a seller second, I would think. Um, but even that, you know, the person to talk to would be Erica West. That's an excellent question, though, Stephen. Um, okay. And she's going to be calling in, uh, hopefully, here in the next segment. And so, I'll ask her that question for you. If you will, you still be listening? Uh, uh, hopefully, I will. I can't guarantee it. it. Depends what happens in the next hour or so. Well, you don't have nothing else going on. You can listen. To <laughs> <laughs> Another That's fifteen right. minutes won't hurt. But um. Oh, oh, in the next segment, I didn't know how far along the next segment was going to be. Okay. Well, no, no, we'll be starting next segment here probably not long after you and I hang up. Okay, that'll be great. Okay, buddy. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. All righty. Well, have a great day. Um. <clears throat> yeah, that's see. We got to have experts on here a lot more than me. me. That's why we got <laughs> Craig Giles, Erica, Andy. Well, I mean, we got them all. But um, but it. So the best thing to do, I guess, to to close out this first segment is to just call your agent. Call your agent if you, you if you're dealing with a reliable agent that has your best interest uh, in mind, then they are there to guide you through that process and help you make a, an informed and educated decision. Well, is there anything for those that don't have an agent? They've got, you know, USAA. There's really no agent. I don't have a personal agent. Right, right. And that's, I mean, personally, I love USAA. I wish that they um, dealt with an agency force. I'd love to represent them, but yeah. that's one of the downsides of, um, one of the few downsides of dealing with companies that, that don't have an agency force. You, just, you call, but you have, you have me. That's right. <laughs> we got Craig. That's all we need, and, and that is a big deal, and and it is so. And now, obviously, I'm, I've got some, a lot of several other questions we want to talk about, and and one on the other side of the break. Because I know we're right up against a break. I want to talk about from a real estate agent's perspective, mm -hmm. um, how the these storms, hurricane stuff, can affect closing. Because of insurance, sure. Because you may say, uh, Frankie, we're not insuring this tomorrow, right. and then we got a problem. Then we can't close. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, and we got a lot of other questions, and we want we want to help you if you're listening right now. Give us a call. The number is seven nine nine eight two five five seven nine nine eighty two fifty five. Be right back with more success in real estate. And now, the Mortgage Update with Erica Hill West on Success in Real Estate. All right, good morning again. Welcome back to Success in Real Estate. I'm Frankie Griffin, and it is time for our Mortgage Update with Erica West. She is our mortgage go-to gal. How you doing, Miss Erica? I'm doing great. How are you, Frank? Oh, it's such a fine day today. I'm in studio with Craig Giles. It's, this is just the life. Wonderful. And Brian's here too. I know. In fact, I just asked, I asked Brian because I was I'm I'm feeling hungry for some reason when I was asking Brian for something to eat, and he said, "Tough luck, nothing here." And I, in fact, I offered him I was going to cook him a grilled cheese sandwich, but. But then I remembered it's nacho cheese. Yeah, <laughs> I, had, I had to sneak that one back in. <laughs> anyway, I don't know if you heard that this morning, Erica, but that's sort of in-house joke. We'll be all right. Moving on. Um, you still there? 
I am here. Okay, I thought you might have hung up on that one. It was pretty, that was pretty rough. Sorry about that. Well, Miss Erica, did you happen to hear the phone caller right before you called in by chance? I did not. I was on another conference call. What? Well, hope. Well, hopefully he's still listening because he had a question that I thought only you could answer, and um, okay. I told him we'd bring it right up. But his question is, he is selling a rental house to his tenant. His tenant's actually buying the house. And his question was, could he as the owner actually pay the down payment for the tenant to get the loan? No. That's what I thought. Now, let me ask. Um, now that's your short answer. Right? That's the short answer. No. <laughs> and that pretty that sounded like that was going to stay. But did you like that? Uh, yeah, yeah, to the point. Um, now we got to spread it out for about ten more minutes. That's okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, but the 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 um, thing I brought up to him, and I told him I didn't have a clue if this would even be acceptable or not. But could. Could he, as the seller, take like a seller second finance part of it to offset that down payment in some way? Well, what they could do is, um, and we would need Andy's help, uh, they could do a lease to own to where you set it up so that a portion of the rental payments that they're paying mm -hmm. goes towards down payment. And once they do a lease to own, it actually when it come, when the contract comes due, the current tenant would just be refinancing, so there most likely wouldn't be a need for a down payment. Yeah, and that takes your tax assessment down to four percent. That's right. Which would save a lot of money on uh, the property tax <clears throat> by doing that, and that, and that's a good. I didn't think about that, Erica, but um, but Stephen, hey, if that's you're, how you call me. <clears throat> that's right. If I don't choke to death or gag death, but <coughs> but. Uh, Stephen, if you're listening, hopefully you heard that and that makes sense to you. And the person to call about that would be Andy Owen. <clears throat> He's our real estate attorney here in town with Owen and McKay Law Firm, and he does a lot of those things, um, um, helping tenants to actually be able to purchase the house without financing it outright. So that's a good idea. Well, what else is going on in finance? You know, just trucking along. It seems like everybody's still out there buying, you know, since it's just nice weather, which yeah. is always good. But um, we did see a little, a little jump, teeny tiny little jump in rates from last Friday to, to this week. Um, and I've been trying to encourage everybody that the, the trend, the trend is going up. You know, the trend is going up. So if you're on the fence, I definitely would do something, you know, in the last yeah. quarter of this year to kind of, take advantage of what we keep telling you is historically low interest rates. Sure. Well, and I keep hearing them talking about they are looking or thinking very strongly about raising these rates um, in December is what I keep hearing on the news and stuff. So we'll see what yeah, happens. Sure. <clears throat> but Yeah, we will. But I, I just I think it's one of those things where everybody keeps um, thinking that you know, oh, it'll be better next year once the election is gone. And that's just something I wouldn't really gamble with. Sure. If you're thinking that you want to move um, or purchase at all, you should probably, first of all, talk to me and kind of see where you stand financially. Mm -hmm. And then talk to Frankie. Yeah. So he can put you in the right job. You betcha. And then we got to get Craig to insure it. That works. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, we were talking, in fact, while I got you on the phone um and i think this is something we kind of touched on last week erica talking about the hurricane um about how you know a, a storm a ma or a hurricane of such can actually delay closing because of the insurance can't get the insurance yeah uh, yeah companies are uh, not binding anything until after the storm has passed yeah most most of ours were shutting I down on thursday I can't blame them. Yeah. But, yeah, exactly. But see, that to me, now that sounds reasonable, you know, 24 hours. Mm -hmm. out. You know, if it was a week out or something like that. Right. Um, 
Well, is that routine about 24 hours for most companies? Or there's not a hard fast rule, but that's kind of standard. You know, they were, they want to see where that storm's going to go. They don't they don't want to shut down and not write business, but they also don't want to take the claims that uh, that come with a hurricane. So they're they're waiting as long as they can, and once they're convinced it's going to hit an area, that's when that's when they shut us down. Well, well, thank goodness. None of my clients had any issues with that. We we know how to schedule a closing. There you go. We don't schedule during a hurricane. <laughs> Ain't that right, Eric? That's right. <laughs> well, well, how can we get in touch with you if we want to go ahead and refinance? And by the way, not only are the rates still low, this time of year, historically, you start seeing these home values, the prices start coming down a little bit. That's right. So it's, it's, you're absolutely right. If you're looking to ca- uh, call, if you're looking to buy a house, you need to give us a call. And um, to get that loan, we got to call Erica. And how can we get in touch with you, Miss Erica? You can reach me on my cell phone, which is 803 528 5019. You can email me at erica at lendingpathmortgage.com. Or you can find me on Facebook. Just search for the Mortgage Go To Gal. A lot of information there, too. Um, Miss Erica, I thank you so much and hope you have a wonderful weekend. You do the same. Thanks, Frankie. All right, sweet. Take care. All right, again, that's Erica West. And uh, if you couldn't capture her information riding down the road, uh, just go to my website, frankiegriffin.com, and you'll see a link there with our real estate partners. And you'll see her there uh, with all her contact information. Craig Giles is right there if you have some insurance questions. And, um, and he'll help you out. And, 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 you know, and you actually get a lot of calls from people that are not insured with you. We do. Asking. Yeah, we do. We questions. do. Um, and, well, uh, you know, a lot of your students. Yeah. Um, and, and that's fine. That's, uh, you know, um, we, we're, uh, we're more than willing to share information and advice and, uh, and help, help whoever we can. Well, the, one of the nice things I think, or luxury, I guess, because you're you're an independent agency. Right now, what does that mean? A lot of people may not understand that. Well, you, we have uh, you have either independent or captive agents. Captive agents are those who represent only one company. And of course, I, I started my career as a captive agent with uh, with Allstate, and a um, uh, great company. I, I, I still have some some policies with Allstate, and uh, my brother is uh, is still with Allstate, has an Allstate agency, and uh, but. But almost four years ago, I, you know, was four. Has it been that long? Yeah, four. For November's four years. Jeez. Four years ago that uh, that I, I jumped ship and and uh, joined the the independent side of the uh, of the business, and that means that I have the uh, the ability to represent uh, as well as many carriers as as I want, and that want me to represent them. So we uh, at our agency, I, I work directly with uh, half a dozen different carriers, and then. Um, uh, my staff and I, all three, are also brokers, which means we can work through some uh, general agencies to have access to dozens and more carriers and allow us to do some kind of off-the-wall things or high-risk things, things mm-hmm. that other companies don't want to do. So it just it gives us a lot of freedom to uh, to help people. It's very rare that we have to say no to someone. Yeah. So you can just search your, search around. Right. To get the best yeah, rates. We, and- well, we, we look for the best rate, but we also are looking for the best carrier for that individual, uh, you know, depending on the scenario, what, whether they have a um, a portfolio of investment homes or uh, they're just the standard consumer with a home and a few cars, we there are different carriers that have different appetites, and, and we help match them with the company. And then, obviously, we're looking for a good rate as well. Craig, I got to be honest with you. When I ha- when I do have an insurance question, I rarely call you. I call them <laughs> girls. You got. Well, that's what you should do. People ask me questions, or I ask them if they want a fast answer or a right answer. <laughs> well, they, both those young ladies, they are so, they're awesome. Yeah, they I are. Mean, they're any anytime you need something, they're they're um, they're right there to um, to answer the question. And if they don't know, it's I don't know that I've ever called about something and they had to call me back. It's just. Oh, there's a, it's often, Frankie, that I'm asking them questions. Well, and yeah. I mean they're they're on top of it. Yeah. Yep. Um, they help me remember stuff. Um, Frankie, you need to get this. You need to do that. And cause especially when we're buying um, the house, my son's in a fixer upper, and there was some challenges. Well, it's a fixer upper. It needs right. a lot of work and. Right. That affects the insurance there a lot too. Yep. How much time we got left, Brian? A minute ten seconds. Let's bring Chuck up real quick. Um, 
Let's go to our phone line. Chuck, how you doing this morning? Good morning. Thank you. How are you? Oh, we're doing fine today. We, we got about a minute, so I want to see if I could help you real quick. Okay, it's a real quick one. Um, I have uh, some some uh, noticed some uh, spots on my roof or on my ceiling after the uh, the rains last week. Wanted to see if that'd be something I could. Uh, that'd be a home insurance uh, question that maybe they could. Uh, uh, look at replacing the roof or fixing the roof, or is that something I would have to take care of myself? Well, the first thing you want to do is have a contractor look, determine the, what the damage is, how much um, it's going to cost to repair the damage before you file a claim. You don't want to do something that's going to drive your rate up um, unless you know that you're going to be collecting enough money from the, the carrier to make it worthwhile. So, okay. And, and that's a, Chuck, that's a question I've been getting a lot is they're not sure, you know, a lot of roofs apparently started leaking, and mm -hmm. Greg was saying that the wind could have lifted the shingle up a little bit where the wind, could, I mean, the rain can blow up under it. But um, I tell you what, Chuck, we're right up against the brakes. we got to uh, take off, but we'll talk about this more on the other side, okay? And love to hear from you, 799-8255. Be right back with Success in Real Estate. All right, good morning again. Welcome back to Success in Real Estate. I'm Frankie Griffin, broker in charge and appraiser in studio with Craig Giles, independent insurance agent that owns Giles Independent Insurance Agency. Yep. Is that right? And um, we've got probably 20 more minutes left or so, but we'd love to hear from you. If you've got any questions or comments or concerns, especially after the hurricane has now passed, uh, give us a call. The number is 799-8255. You 799-8255. And before we went to break, Craig, um, we had a caller, Chuck, was asking about um, apparently his roof had some leaks in it. Right. And, 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 which is a common. In fact, I was telling him before the show, I was getting a lot of calls about yep, that. Yep. So what what do you what do you recommend there? Well, you know that's a, um, like just like we were talking about before the show. There's a lot of different scenarios and a lot of different what ifs. So if you've got if you have or you suspect you have damage to your roof, um, or or really any other claim, but we'll go with the roof example. Call your agent. Um, you should have um, a, someone there that will help guide you through that process because the the things that you want to know is what's causing the damage because that helps determine whether or not it's covered loss. Mm -hmm. How much damage is there, because that's going to help us um, determine whether or not you need to file a claim. And then um, from there, you can make an educated decision as to whether or not you need to file a claim. Um, obviously, if you've got a $1,000 deductible and you've got $1,500 worth of damage, <clears throat> then you don't need to file a claim right. just to collect $500, because you will end up spending more in, in insurance premium yep. over the course of that. But um, but having someone that, that um, if, if a, a reliable contractor that can go at, in that roof or on top of that roof, or like we were just talking during the break, has a drone that can fly up on there and, <laughs> yeah. and look at damage, um, helps us as agents advise you about whether or not that's going to be a covered loss. Um, you can have situations where you've got incorrectly installed shingles, um, and you don't know about it until there's a heavy rainstorm and uh, shingles have slipped out of place or there's uh, nail holes that have gone you know all the way through the the roof and uh, allow are allowing water in things like that that aren't going to be covered losses um, because of an you know damage resulting from uh, something that the roofer did incorrectly yeah but you could have something as simple as, as a, a tree limb fell poked a hole in the roof we get four inches of rain like we did this during the storm that can cause a lot of damage and that would be a covered loss yeah, and and we've seen, I've seen pictures anyway. A lot of people had trees come down, mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. limbs, and that's what we've dealt with the most from the storm uh, in in our area in in the Midlands is, is trees down or limbs down that have damaged cars and and homes. Does that affect your pol or your premium? Depend on oh, a lot of trees in the yard or or certain types of trees. No, no, that's not something that now if you have a if you have a um a, a tree that has limbs that's touching. A yeah. structure, yeah. then you can bet the insurance company is going to want you to have that uh, tree trimmed yeah. so that it's not constantly rubbing on shingles and roof lines. Yeah, and that, in fact, that's a big one. I mean, a home inspector is going to call that out. Yep. Um, and so, oh, and in fact, that reminds me too. 
are well i just when we bought this again my son joseph's house mm-hmm. the fixer upper um which is looking really nice it, it's a it looks really nice right now very pleased with that but i remember uh leah mm-hmm. asking when we first bought it um for a copy of the home inspection right is that something insurance companies are requesting that no that's something that as um as the agents mm-hmm. helps us it gives us a lot of details on that home so that right. we can ensure that we're uh, giving the proper amount of coverage um in the past you know years ago agents would just ask you know how many square feet do you have is it brick is it frame you know some simple questions like that but there's so many different homes custom homes with um, different options available in the home that we want to we're trying to get down to the nitty-gritty and make sure that we're ensuring that thing properly so that if something happens to that home that you have the coverage in place to put you back the way you were before sure. but how does that home inspection I, I guess I'm not well if you've got um, if you've got custom features on a home um, sunrooms um, uh, you know crown moldings we're, we're, we're really getting in depth on the quality of construction versus just asking you how many square feet it is and determining a cost per square foot from that so okay. it, it's it's us going a little above and beyond to make sure we're sure. ensuring you properly so is this just you or a few agents that or is this companies in general are I, now wanting these you know, i don't uh, i don't ask other agents what their processes are yeah. <laughs> but um, I, this is just something that that we started doing because the more information we have the more comfortable we are knowing that we have you covered properly okay well we want, well and that leads into the next question is one uh, make sure we have the right coverage for because inevitably when there is a crisis or catastrophe hurricane flood mm-hmm. um it's very i mean and then especially if you wind up losing your house over right it, and then told well that's not insured right and that's the first thing we do is and that we a lot of times have to educate the consumer on is that when we're insuring your house we really don't care how much it's worth we're, we're not interested in the market value yeah. um, you know we're looking at it the way a builder would what's the cost per square foot because that's mm-hmm. that's what we're on the hook for is to replace put, it right is to repair it replace it put you back in as good a uh, condition as you were before and uh, that confuses a lot of people because market value can vary widely if you've got a 3,000 square foot home in Shandon um, you could have that identical home uh, out in Swansea you know identical sure. home but the market value is completely different sure. and um, so so we don't really care about that we're looking at what's it going to cost to put you back uh, in the condition that you were before and you know one of the most important things that people need to um, be aware of especially if you have an older policy if you've been in your home 30 or 40 years and you've never looked at that policy is you, you need to go back at it and look at it and make sure that you have replacement cost coverage um, a few carriers will still write actual cash value policies um, and if you have an older policy, you may have one of those. Um, it's something that, that we stay away from. Um, it's just not uh, good for the consumer. But that replacement cost policy, the, the companies will build in a, a different percentage. It varies 20 to 25 percent that they guarantee above and beyond the coverage that we're writing to make sure that we're putting you back the way you were before. So how do I even know what, you know, because, you know, obviously I don't deal with insurance. so. When I call you and, and say, "Look, I want to get this house insured," I don't know what questions to ask. I, I, you know, I'm thinking when I write this check for insurance, if something happens to this house, I'm covered. But that's just not the case in in all cases, anyway. Right. So how do I know that I've got what I need? Well, that's where you need to deal with an agent, and and a, a good agent is going to be the ones asking the questions. Mm. Um, they're going to be asking. Uh, you know, do you, do you have any high value jewelry? I mean, aside from just making sure we have the coverage on the structure correct, we need to look at your personal belongings because companies will put limits on certain categories, things like jewelry, um, firearms, uh, any kind of fine arts. Um, so, you know, that your agent should be asking those questions and, and guiding you through that process. And, and I think that's the key: is you need an agent. Um, right person not just calling a company because right. I gotta tell you I, I don't I think they just sell them some policies and and I, yep. you may have all the coverage you need you may not right some of them some of them do and you know I got I got into this Frankie um, 
uh, well, I guess this is my 19th year in business and uh, started out in business with my brother Brad and, and we've been in business uh, together for years and you know we both had a little doubts when we were getting into it as to whether or not we would have j jobs because that was really was the um, the onset of the internet and insurance sales via the internet a lot of the companies were jumping into that yeah. and and trying to uh, bypass the agents and it, it didn't take them long to realize that people wanted an agent. They wanted somebody they could go sit down in front of and ask questions. And my, the, we feel like we can trust. Right. I know you got my back. Right. We'll be taken care of. Well, and just like you know your your example of, of what you do and, and you calling uh, me and and dealing with Erica and dealing with Andy is, we're all experts in our own field. You can you can spread yourself too thin. Mm -hmm. So it comes down to having someone that's an expert in the field that you can rely on. Well, and it, it's it's really nice to know. Um, you know, and obviously I've got your cell phone right inside that phone. I can just hit go. But I got Leah's there, too. Good man. That's a smart move. That's the main one. <laughs> she is. Um, I don't even know if she's listening. I doubt. Did you even tell her you're coming on the show today? I don't remember if I did or not. I'm, I'm hoping they're busy writing policies. Maybe next time I should just have Leah come on. <laughs> <laughs> she is just, she is incredible. And um, you're very fortunate to have the help. You, but you know what? That's a sign of... Um, a good business when you can when you've got the the wherewithal to put the right people in the right places um so kudos yeah. to that you've done a very good job i have been fortunate well we're up against our last break of the day um but we still got one more segment to go so if you have any questions or any thoughts or need some help from craig give us a call the number 799-8255 799-8255 be right back with success 95.9 FM and 1470 AM. Here's Frankie Griffin with your weekly featured property on success in real estate. All right, good morning again. Welcome back to Success in Real Estate. Now, I do have a featured property really nice house with a lot of room if, if this is something you're looking for it's about in fact, a little over 3200 square feet it, in it's in Blythewood in the uh, Beasley Creek Estates subdivision it's a uh, it's a fairly new subdivision um, this particular house is about nine years old and I expect most of them are around 10 or under in fact they're still building a few new houses in there but it's just a really nice house uh, there's four full bedrooms, nice size bedrooms with a, a very large office. You've also got a formal dining and living room if you want that. Um, and the room over the garage, which is an oversized room over the garage. So it's just a huge house, a lot of space, a lot of room. And um, I think this would be something that would be very appealing if you're looking for something this size. And right now we've got it on the market at uh, 224,000, 224. But it is just, it's just really nice. The kitchen's nice. It's, it's got the granite countertops, um, the stainless steel appliance. I mean, it is it is just really really nice. Um, I'm trying to see if there was something else I wanted to tell you. Obviously, it's in the. Um, over in this part of Blythewood, it's Richland Two School District. I have a lot of people always ask about that. Want to know what school they go into? So it's uh, it is Richland Two, but again, we'd love to show you this house if this is something if you're looking in this area. You can always just give me a call. In fact, my cell number is three one five seven three zero three. Again, three one five. 7303 and again if you couldn't write down that number just go to my website frankiegriffin.com in fact uh, you can actually look at this house on my website um, in fact you'll see it it's one of the featured properties right there on the home page you'll see it you won't there's no way you can miss it it's just right there to grab you as soon as you log on but again just frankiegriffin.com all my contact information is there and I'd love to show you the house. It's a really nice house. Well, in studio, I've, uh, we've got Craig Giles. He's the owner of Giles Independent Insurance Agency. And we've been talking about insurance. Yeah. That makes sense. 
does. <laughs> yeah, it does. And, and got a few more minutes left in the show. So if you have any questions or comments for Craig, give us a call, 799-8255, 799 and and Craig, here's something I want. I've been meaning to ask you for a while now, but um, but I'm going to ask you right on the, on the show. So I'm going to put me on the spot. A, hope you got a good answer for me. <laughs> but one of the things that you know I would like to be able to do, and and you can sort of coach me through it. But you know, if I'm showing a buyer a house, they're interested in the house, they like the house, want to make an offer. You know, one of the things we want to know as a buyer is mm -hmm. you know what kind of problems have either existed in the past with this property or in some or may still exist and you know and I hate to say it but some people just not very truthful about right disclosing mm -hmm. stuff and you just never know right. and and I know there's a something called a clue report but is that something I'm able to get my hands on, or or is there something else I can use to try to find out what kind of damage? And obviously, what I'm looking for is if something happened to the house and they filed a claim. Right, right. And if they if they have done that, um, well, to answer your first question, you may or may not be able to access that information depending on your agent. We as uh, as agents have access to Clue reports, and Clue is a certified loss underwriters experience report and uh, basically it's a claims database that um, the majority of, of insurance companies share that claim information because uh, as people switch homes buy and sell homes and move the uh, the companies want to know um, about the losses that those uh, consumers have have had because they use that as a rating factor um, so we will actually pull a, a clue report um, through the carriers when we're um, quoting that policy uh, for that for the client and uh, and hopefully binding that policy, and it will tell us if they've had past claims. Um, it'll tell us what properties uh, those claims were on and and what type of claims. Now, um, the majority of the companies out there are only looking at the claims that the client has had. But there's a few of them out there that are actually looking at that property, and they may or may not want to insure that property to, um, based on what type of claims it's had, water being a, a big one. Mm -hmm. um, so <sighs> probably the best thing, uh, the best way to access that information or use it as, a, as an agent um, would be to have a contingency in your, in your offer, in your contract, as to whether or not, um, I guess, the ability to get insurance on that property or the, the likelihood of past claims. Obviously, you know, we were talking not everybody's truthful. They're supposed to reveal a lot of that information on a property right. disclosure form. Um, and they should know that at some point we're going to find out about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But, um, you know, so we can access that information for you once we're quoting the policy and uh, and pulling information on that uh, on that property. We'll have access to it. And, and we obviously are happy to share that with our clients. So if I get a house, or excuse me, a contract ratified, let's say I get a contract ratified today, mm -hmm. um, then I can contact you and say, all right, Craig, the house, it's under contract right. with a contingency that um, my buyer has to be satisfied. Can I put in there satisfied with the clue report? Um, well, you know, I'm... That really is more for a question I should be asking you. I mean, I, I'm not sure how you know the, the ins and outs of the, of the real estate contracts and and what what's acceptable or not. But I would certainly think that um, a previous loss history okay. um, could would be a reasonable contingency to have in there. I mean, but, I, I certainly would want that as a consumer. Yeah, because what I would like to be able to do is is um, if I can find out the history or if something major or catastrophic, I mean, you're going to have things happen with a house. Sure. I mean, you're going to have, I, and I understand that. But if it was a, something, if it flooded, right. and, I want to know that. Water is the big um, the big thing that the carriers want to know about. The, the companies that do use that information about the property itself instead of looking at the claims of a consumer, they're worried about water. Yeah. They're worried about you know the possibility of mold and uh, you know, water, water can cause a lot of long-term damage if not uh, mediated correctly. Well, I was, and the reason I, this even came to my attention or my mind, because I was actually, I went to um, show a house to mm -hmm. buy, that was in an area, and I'm not going to say what area because I don't want to call anybody out, but, but it was in an area that I know 
had substantial flooding mm-hmm. a year or so ago. Right. And and I mean almost every house in there had flood damage. Right. This owner, um, and he and maybe he's telling the truth, but he said there was no flood damage to his house, none at all. Right. Um, and maybe there was, um, but it. it but he was the only house within two miles that was radius that wasn't. If it did. Um, but see, I would like to know that, and 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 I guess the main reason I'd want to know that ahead of time is because I would like to provide that information to my home inspector, right? So that can give them an idea of what to specifically look at, look for, pay attention to. Right. That and you're you're saying where my brain was going is that you know a good home inspector is going to um if they're aware that that may have yeah. been a possibility is going to look for those things because yeah. if you've had major water damage there there are going to be signs um uh, that that water was there mm-hmm. um or there at least signs that um damage has been repaired yeah well, I, you know, Brian's giving us the finger, so we got <laughs> probably about another minute left, it looks like. But, Craig, how can we get in touch with you? Because I know a lot of people have more questions and they want to make sure they got good insurance. So how can we get in touch with you? Well, our uh, phone number at the office is 728-3318. Uh, you can go to Giles Brothers. That's G-I-L-E-S Brothers.com. It has uh, all of our contact information. You can call us, email us. Um, Send care of pigeon. We'll <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it done. Yeah. Well, Craig, I can't thank you enough for coming in. And again, if you uh, if you could not write down Craig's information, just go to my website, FrankieGriffin.com. Click on Real Estate Partners, and you'll certainly see Craig right there, with um, all the best in at what they do on that page. And anyway, so we are out of time. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Please be safe going to have a lot of good stuff next weekend so don't forget next friday tune in from nine to ten talk to you later but we've been listening to success in real estate